Hello everyone, we've got a match today between Finnish Shitters and Troll Wars. Another one between these two guilds. And this will be on Druid's out. So we see Troll Wars running their regular sort of snare build with the Water Alley, Earth Alley, and I'm sure this will be an AOD and the Domez. Same as normal, probably be a East Urge Domez. And we see Finnish Shitters with Okay, this is a bit different from Finnish shooters, they're running Solar Frontline, uh, Paragon, and Ellie, Ellie Monk, so it'll probably be an Elsa, judging by the rest of the composition. And two Mesmers, uh, probably Wastrels and Dormes, I'd say, judging by the composition. Yeah, so Flash Paragon. And NS, I'm sure that they would have expected this snare build from NP, considering how much NP's run this recently. So NS will probably have PH on the Pro Monk. And yeah, so this is actually an interesting build that we don't see much. The solo dervish paragon le two mesmers is actually a really heavy counter build. Um, it's actually quite a weak build most of the time. That's why you don't see it very often. It's it's only really good when your wastrels has strong people to camp. So you should be successful. Uh, the wastrels should pay off this game, I think. Considering there will be a lot of characters to camp since NP run Ellie bars, it can't really deal with the Wastrels very well. So, either be Jafai on Wastrels or Godly. Okay, Godly's on the Wastrels. He's running double Wastrels, so that'll be no backfire. That'll be three Rups, probably Dash, no res. Okay, and it looks like. Alright, so. NS do actually choose to cap despite not having somebody waiting back for the next flag. That's a very ballsy move. Because now NP is going to come up with their second flag right now, and after they cap this flag, it's going to be very difficult for NS to run flag unless NS starts scoring some kills. So, this water really actually does have water attunement, which isn't very standard. Okay, so USA is actually choosing to run on their Ellie, so now we're probably going to see NP push up really deep on them because it's going to be hard for NS to cause much pressure with the solar frontline while their Ellie is running. Yeah. There is a slight problem with this build in that it doesn't actually have that much damage. Um, it's really dependent on a lot of the Wastrels damage, which is, looks like it's doing quite a lot right now against this Water Alley, but without the Wastrels damage you really can't score any kills. And so that's why it's that's why I consider it a counter build so much, because the only way to run it is against you know builds that it counters. You can't run it just like Range and Ekromesma or Split Build or something, which is good in sort of most circumstances. So we do see Shadow Hex as well on the P block of NS. So they are specking this push build quite hard, but while NS are holding on this, what I'm pretty sure is a lighting side jelly, while they're holding on this, it'll be quite difficult for them to actually score kills. Yeah, so he does drop the flag and recognizes that it's not really very useful to be holding that flag. And yeah, you see the PNH there as well on the Promonk and Val as well on the Promonk. So NS are just gonna try and go for kills here and let NP boost. It's like NP is uh, winning this exchange quite a lot at the moment. So okay, this Earth Alley I'm sure will... Okay, he's got ward of melee this time rather than ward against foes. Uh, sort of trying to spec against the double frontline that NS loves to run, which is not a bad move. But he will, he's not getting the energy above his head, so I'm assuming he's not running attunement again this game. Last time I saw NP run this build, they had Glowstone and Glyph Lesser Energy on the Earth Alley. So this is very campable uh, by the Wastrels, the same as the Water Alley Byros. So we see him getting camped right now, but he's going to run quite far back. It'll be difficult for a godly to push up and camp him when he's so far back. Except Godly doesn't really care, he's sort of sitting behind the back line anyway. Okay, so NP is taking some damage, but not really getting that close to wiping. And even if they just take a couple of deaths, as long as they don't take a full wipe, it doesn't really matter considering they're boosting, and it's so hard for NS to get the flag in. Is this water really taking quite a lot of damage right now? The godly is uh, trying to camp this earth, he just keeps running far back. Not 
really having too much success with the way she was yet. I'm getting very close to dying, so that's quite bad news for NS that they're getting so close to dying because they care about taking death way more than NP does right now because NS can't get the flag in and can't boost whereas NP can. So it might benefit them to try and go for a different alley that like the water alley, since the water alley is very far pushed up, but it's very hard for them to get much damage on this earth alley considering how far back he is. If they were to camp this water alley, they might be able to get a lot of damage because they could have the rest of their team hit him as well. The NP is giving up some ground, which isn't going to cost them anything because NS don't have a flag, I'm assuming. Oh, actually they might have a flag. Where would it be? Oh, sorry, I'd missed that. Butters is running the flag around the side, but... NP responds nicely, pulling back and not letting him run that in. So it will be very difficult for Butters to run this in, I'm pretty sure he won't be able to get it in. Unless we see some crazy shutdown plays on the water alley. This is a pretty precarious move to try and pull. If he gets collapsed right now, he's going to be reached by NP sooner than his own team. So he won't be able to pass the flag off, he'll be stuck carrying the flag. And I think that he would really want to pass his flag off to his number 8, so that he can get a lot of damage off. Mm. Because if NP trains out NS's number 8, it puts NP in a really precarious position if they can't score a kill right off the bat. So Butters actually might die here, he's taking a lot of damage and he's going to have to drop this flag, I, I guess. Diverted Chain Lightning right there. So they're getting very close to scoring kills, but if Butters was able to use his 40-40 set here and you know, rather than just sitting here sort of getting trained out while holding the flag, then he would probably they would probably be scoring some kills while NP try and pull this block off. But he's not able to pass the flag off. And getting very close to dying will probably drop quite soon. Yeah, there we go. So, giving the boss to the water alley. So, as I've said in previous games, getting the boss in water alley in this kind of setup, uh, it's, a, it's a double edged sword. So, it's going to mean that Butters could hunt that water alley down when he's at main team. If Butters can get a nice lightning surge combo off and get some nice shatters from the two Mesmers, then they could easily score a kill on the water alley if he overextends just a little bit. But, yeah, it's pretty much. Seems impossible for NS to run the flag right now. Looks like they might just have to try and stall out. They do actually have a good build for splitting and pushing uh, if they can do it with their monk. Lots of teams make the mistake against NP when NP runs his build where when teams are splitting and pushing, they won't push with the monk and so they'll get just caught out by the water alley and then just killed uh, by the very low damage, but the damage that doesn't let you escape. The butter is taking out the outside archer here. NS not attempting to run a flag, probably just playing a little bit defensive, yeah. Trying to sort of stay alive and stall the game a little bit, since they won't kill on this setup right now. Interesting to see Godly's camping. So Godly's camping the boss water alley. So it kind of actually looks like they're waiting for Butters to overcommit here in the base. Yeah, here we go. And so they're gonna maybe try and collapse now and catch Butters out of position. But Butters probably sees it coming. And he's probably gonna get out just fine. Yeah, so both teams playing quite smart here. And that's doing a good job at stalling the game out while NP boosts. I think that the closer this gets to 28, the more uh, NS will have an advantage if they don't take any depth. But it's very possible, it's a very risky position to be in uh, for the next 15 minutes or so because every death is going to really snowball against them. But if they manage to survive, they will have a much better 28, I believe. The butter's running back to base, probably to just try and run a flag out and distract NP some more. NP bringing a flag out on the boss, Ellie. Both teams just continuing to stall. So yep, this, this is great what Butters is doing, running the flag out. It's distracting NP, it's getting NP to sort of push up and 
but is probably going to drop the flag, I would guess, and just run away as soon as NP get close. So this is wasting a lot of NP's time. Yep, he's just going to run away now. A very smart play by Butters. Uh, he knows that there's no chance of getting the flag in, so he's just kind of baiting the flag to make sure his main team survives. Yeah, the reason I think that NS would have an advantage at 28 is just because their build has a lot more damage when they're split up than NPs does. The Water Ellie and the Earth Ellie don't really have that much damage, and the AOD doesn't really have any damage either, so when they have to split up their damage on NP side, it becomes very difficult for them to score kills on sort of either side. But they do have a big advantage with all the snares and the AOD that they can actually catch out a solo monk. So if or even kill two monks quite quite easily if they're not if NS isn't careful. So it's kinda of weird that they don't have much damage but they also have this big chance to catch out uh, you know, solo healers or people that aren't surrounded by characters that can help them. Because NS is Sorry, NP's build is just, it's really just so aggressive. He's able to play so offensively. Whereas if they had a Wastrel, they wouldn't have the same ability to catch out monks and kill them when not supported. So yeah, NS is just trying to sort of push in and take down NPCs because they realize that they're probably not going to be able to kill MP, so the game is going to go to 28. At least it's going to go to 28 if NS have a chance of winning. NP is probably starting to realize, yeah, they just repaired the seed there, starting to realize that they're having trouble scoring kills as well, and they'll probably need to get NPCs down. So both teams are starting to sort of set up for 28 minute plays. I'm gonna try and get NPCs down. Ooh, taking death on the dervish of Troll Wars, but it's not gonna mean anything. They will res, I'm sure, and have all their sigs back in the, the moment when they boost. But as does run in the base, but. Rather than dive for an NPC, he does play smart, he doesn't want to accumulate the DP, and he does run out to safety. He's getting caught by this Ellie. If he gets caught up and snared up here, even if this monk does follow, it means that he's going to be snared with really nowhere to run, and the whole team of NP can just run back and train him out for basically distance of the entire map, because there's, no, there's nowhere for him to run at that point. So he's caught in a kind of risky position here. He is trying to snipe out the water alley, which if they can get the mesmers in range and shatter the water alley, they could get a kill off possibly. But it's going to be difficult unless they get some more pressure on because the monks will be able to prod it quite easily. The dervish of NP looks like he's trying to push up and get some NPCs, I think. The smart move by him, or just scouting to see if they're flag running on NS. But is just gonna run off and try and pull off more damage, I think, but getting followed quite closely. Might have a chance to score a kill here on the. Nope. Not able to make anything from that. The dervish from NP. Trying to take out NPCs. It's very smart play. NS not really giving any any room, collapsing straight away. So it would really benefit uh, NS if they could cap NP's vine seed right now, but they did cap their own vine seed, so they would have to use NP's vine seed to cap NP's bridge. And NP has actually really intelligently placed their vine seed in their pit, so it's going to be very difficult for NS to grab that. So it's brilliant play by NP to put the vine seed in their pit and recognize that it'll be advantageous for NS if they cap NP's vine seed. So NS is taking quite a bit of damage right here. It's very hard for them to take advantage of the you know, fact that the bus alley doesn't have much armor because it doesn't look like NS is able to get much pressure off, so they can't snipe out this alley very easily. But the moment they start getting some pressure, it's going to be a very easy snipe, I think. 
Dervis pushing, pushing again for more NPCs. This is a nice play that he keeps trying to do this. Eventually, they might be able to get a bunch of characters up on the bridge uh, before NS does, and they might be able to block the bridge and get a bunch of NPCs. So it's nice that they keep playing around the bridge. It's quite risky for NS that NP keep doing that. Butters pulling back more players and just stalling the game out more. Defy Monk getting a little bit low, but he'll be fine. See some more stalling. Okay, it looks like MP sounds play a little bit aggressive on the back line. While Butters is, looks like he's going to try and run a flag out, and if MP don't see this, this could be a very important flag cap. Okay, so NP is going to try and get NPCs while Butters runs the flag out. That would actually be a nice trade-off if they can get some NPCs, if they can get more than just this archer. Even if uh, it lets NS get the flag in, I think that NP will be very happy with that trade. So yeah, we see here NP blocking the bridge now. So very, very dangerous position for NS to be in. Could, could actually lose the Knights here if Butters doesn't come back. This actually does open up the front door though of, of NP, and NS is great job taking advantage of it, pushing in the front door of NP right now that they're blocking. So it looks like they break the block, maybe get a flag in, yep, fantastic. So it's very good news for NS right here. Pretty sure NP still doesn't have a flag, yeah. So the flag is still in NP's base, this is, might be actually quite a hard flag for them to get out. They're going to take a lot of damage getting this flag out because they won't be able to have any pressure on NS really, which means that Butters will just be allowed to stay in main and get off a lot of damage. So this is quite a risky position for NP for the next minute. They're running on their flagger as well. Normally I would think that they'd want to run on Dervish considering they probably won't be able to kill anywhere. They're running on flagger a little bit risky I think. Might try and pass it off. No, nope, they are actually trying to run on Flagger, so this is giving NS a nice opportunity to try and score some kills. If NP do actually manage to get this flag in though, they will just reset to their position that they were in before, which was kind of a stalemate where NS had the advantage the longer the game went on, but NP did have the morale advantage. Yeah, so NP taking quite a bit of damage. Looks like NS was actually following a little bit. Nice defensive play, but this Ellie's taking a lot of damage. Water Ellie nearly getting taken out there. It's a nice defensive play from NP's Dom Esmer to slow down the damage from Butters. So it looks like NP will be fine, they did manage to cut the flag, so it was a nice try by NS, but they don't get anything out of this. Although NP probably is a little, he's quite low on their monks, and taking still a lot of damage. And I'm sure that they will be able to reset from this. Ellie taking a lot of damage with the Paragon. The butter sitting back quite far, doesn't want to get snared and trained out. He might run another flag for them. But if Butters does run another flag, then NS will lose all their positioning, so... He chooses to just stay main team for the moment. But he can't really hit anything while he's at main team, so... I think that they either need to make a play where Butters pushes up and tries to snipe out this Ellie, or just run another flag. Using Lightning Surge on the Dervish, which is going to get some damage off, but it's... Not really gonna force a kill through, I think. I think the only character they can really kill right now is this Ellie. So they are camping the Ellie with the Wastrels as well right now. Butters can just get some skills up on him. But no, looks like Butters is going back to run a flag. NP might not have noticed. 
It should be great news for NS if they don't notice this. If they do notice this, then NP could just run through. You see that now NP is under absolutely no pressure at all. So they'd be able to run through quite safely in Snare Butters. And that is actually what they will do. So good job by them for noticing this flag run. Butters might actually be forced to drop the flag if the Dervish gets the Snare off. Okay, he does get the Harrier's Grass cri Cripple off, and the Water really does get in range. But this is actually putting the water early out of position slightly. If Butters drops the flag and turns around on his water early, this water early could eat two shatters and all the lightning surge damage. Dangerous position? Okay, he doesn't. They don't go for the kill on the water early straight away. Look like Hemo here was looking for an opportunity to run through front door while the water early was out of position, but they will play a bit more conservative and play it safe. The flag was returned, I believe. Bud is now trying to run out the front door. This Dervish from NP is watching very closely, and he'll no doubt try and collapse on Butters if Butters gets close to the flag stand. So, actually, while NP do this push, it's gonna open up their front door. As soon as this water alley leaves, it opens up the front door of NP. So, Butters might. Yeah, this is actually a nice. This could be a very nice bait play in the making. Okay, we actually do see Hemo going for the front door, so this is brilliant by NS. This water early being way out of position as he was trying to snare this flag. And, okay, NS pushing a monk as well, so very nice play. They will get some NPCs off this, and if they manage to not die after time at main team, it will definitely be a fantastic worthwhile play. NS look like they might just go for some NPCs of their own right now. They actually would be able to block this. Block the gate here, I think. Oh, Butters. Oh, Butters actually snipes out the, the water early and Godly gets boss. So that's great news for uh, NS. Okay, they do get the knights down with four NS players and three NP players. So there's two monks actually for NP here, which means that there's a solo monk at their main team. So this could actually be very bad news for NP. They could take some death to the main team right now if. And it's going to manage to snare them a little bit and slow them down. But no, they do reconnect. But it's going to run another flag. So that was a brilliant play by NS there. The, the bait on the flag run, which allowed them to run through the front door and get some NPCs and steal the boss as well. NP is trying to push out and run another flag. They probably feel like they need to really get some NPCs down soon because they did lose their knights and they do have arguably an inferior 28 build. This water early taking a lot of wastrel damage. Godly is gonna just tee off on this guy with waste with uh, yeah, boss wastrels. He's gonna have a lot of energy management that he can just use to spam just so much wastrel damage. This water early is gonna have a bad day and he can't even get out of Godly's range as well because he can just keep up with him with what. Yeah, NP do take a death, They're taking a lot of pressure right here. This will, this might actually be a wipe if they can manage to keep Godly alive, which it looks like they will be able to quite easily. Lightning surge, yep, that's a nice kill. You see the pack coming out. They might jump, yep, they're going to jump right back on this alley, which is a great move. I'm sure, he'll go down in no time if Butters can get off his skills, but it looks like Butters is being shut down by the Dom Mesmer. But nice job by NP shutting down Butters, but looks like it won't be enough. This water I think will still go down. Yeah, all these shatters in enchant removal and wastrel damage and lightning surge is just nasty. Yeah, the lightning surge and the wastrels really, really punish this kind of flag push build. So NP is losing a lot of their positioning and Oh, I didn't see that, but NS actually ran on their Monk Flagger, which is great for them. They're going to get this flag out and be in a perfect position for 28. And, uh, I'm sure they're going to be able to keep Boss on the Wastrels. It's going to be very hard for NP to take out that Wastrels Messman. Even if they do try and take him out, he's going to get all the skills off, and it's going to free up Butters to get all his skills off as well. So if they, if they try and train out Godly with the Boss... The NP running the flag out the side, that's a smart move by them. They're going to pull back Butters probably by doing this. 
but is probably wanting to secure the boost. Yeah, so this is going to relieve a little bit of pressure on NP. Well, Butters is back for this dervish, and I'm sure that, yeah, okay, the vine seed isn't repaired still. The vine seed is probably still in the pit. So that's great news for NP. If the vine seed was repaired, this would be a little bit of a risky play because Butters could actually run over the vine seed and they could connect, and it would be very hard for NP to get the flag out, and they couldn't pull a damage character back like this. So NP, sorry, NS running another flag on the number 8, backup flag. It looks like they will get this flag through considering that I'm under no pressure now. And two plays of NS are back. But it's this might put the Ellies in a very risky position. Yeah, so this water really probably going to try and get the flag here, but not gonna get it. But he's in a, such a risky position right now, but actually Himo takes advantage of this push and runs in the front door again. So that's a great job by NS, uh, seeing where they can sort of use the pushes of NP to take advantage of that and run in their base. Okay, and this is actually going to have to drop the flag and run back to their base really quickly. They're in risk of getting blocked and killed here with only two monks, I think, but NP do lose their bodyguard. And actually only have one monk right now against... Oh, this monk is going to get taken down very quickly. But at the same time, i got to think that... You gotta think that NS's monks over here are gonna die really soon. Yeah, these guys are not gonna be able to hold up for long at all. So this is gonna be a Lord race at 25 minutes. Pro Monk is nearly back. Ooh, nice PI by Godly. Yep, this is gonna be a game for NS is gonna take this. Okay, congratulations to NS. That was a really exciting game, very close. And some very smart plays by, by both teams. So thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.